Welcome back to the second half of the companion. If you've just tuned in, you have missed a fantastic first half. They can fit the always do it because we have a wonderful lineup for you in the second half of the show. And if you've just tuned in this week, we are celebrating, I should say, Yoga Day Tapa Suna Yoga Narendra Modi's concept uh, of Prime Minister of India. It's something that he's taking to wash taking to heart and making sure that people are made more aware of the concept and different forms of yoga that are out there. So here on the companion we are celebrating not just one day in for a hafta we are dedicating to the concept that is yoga. And Isabelle, yeah I carry on talking away for England. I'd like to reintroduce you to our very special guest here on the show. And he's a yoga expert or guru in many, many ways. He's the founder of Chikri Yoga, a concept we've talked a little bit about but he's been kind enough to bring his lovely assistant as RP with him, and they've been demonstrating throughout for the first half of the show various forms and techniques you can do at home. And Rafa Koi, do you pick up the phone and give us a call? So, once again, I want to reintroduce you to our very special expert, Neil Patel. Welcome to the companion. Thank again. you again. And RP, welcome as well. It's a pleasure to have you with us. Now, we've got a lot of people who would exceptionally excited to speak to you, so let's move on to our first caller, okay. whose name is Mrs. Shah. Mrs. Shah, welcome to the companion. Thank you. Oh, what is your question for Neil today? Right, um, I want to know, I'm, I'm, I'm a 70 years old lady, but at the moment I never had this problem, but now I'm having circulation problem when I'm lying down, mm -hmm. but when I'm standing or walking or sitting, I've got no problem in the legs. Okay. So is there any yoga for that to stop the circulation or to calm down the legs? Okay, so you have poor circulation when you're lying down, is that what you're saying? Sorry, I can't hear. Are you having poor circulation when you lie down? Yeah, when I'm lying down, I'm, I'm having poor. Okay, so what, what's important to do is if you try to raise your legs while you're lying down, so is your, is your bed near a wall? Could you turn so that you can put your legs up against a wall and allow some circulation to happen there? Because it sounds to me like, because when, when the body goes flat, I'm sorry, you're cracking down. Okay, when the body is... I can't hear you. Okay, Mr. Shah, what Neil's saying is because of the way you're lying down on the bed, it's important to elevate your legs slightly. To get the drop up better, does it face a wall if by any chance? Um, no, no, not my legs. My head is facing the wall. Face the wall. Okay, so Neil and Arke are now going to demonstrate I'm something sorry, you can bit. do at home in order to hopefully, if, you know, improve your circulation in your legs. Okay, so please do watch what Arke and Neil are doing now because it's especially for you. So yeah. got, the body will be flat on the bed and she can bend her knees like this, mm -hmm. okay, and then bring one leg up at a time straight. Okay. Okay. And if you hold that leg just up like this for about 10 or 15 seconds, it allows the circulation to come back down the leg towards the body again. And then you can bring that leg back down again and same with the opposite leg, raising it up and just allow the circulation to come back down again. So repeating this, it doesn't have to be the same leg for a very long time. You can just repeat every five seconds, bring it down and the other side as you're lifting. So this is helping the circulation to come down. Yeah. Now, if you have a wall next to you, as I'm saying, you can put your legs up against the wall and just allow the blood to drain down again. Obviously the best thing is to do some standing and some yoga exercises but if you're talking specifically about lying down then you want to do some leg raises from this type of position. If you are stronger you can take both of the knees back to the chest and raise both of the legs up together. Okay and do a little bit of cycling motion in the air. Yeah. And if someone can't, I mean after you're a pro at this, you've been doing this quite some time, but if yeah. someone who's a bit Perhaps unfit, yes. like me, and can't lift their legs that high. <laughs> what do you do? Yeah. Okay, is it okay to still do a bit lower? Yeah, then, then you can do stuff like taking both of the knees back to the chest and just raising one up lightly from here mm -hmm. and then down and then the opposite side. If you're really, really having difficulty with movements, you can do things like that. But the most important thing to remember with circulation is you need muscular contraction okay. to allow the blood to pump down. If you don't get that muscular contraction, exercise in the lower legs, then you must raise the legs and let gravity do it for you. Okay, wonderful. Well, Arthur Neil, thank you very much for uh, demonstrating and thank you very, very much for your call. Now, I want to remind thank you, you, thank you, I hope you found that useful. I have the ugly quality of Peter who's, uh, I'm sure, very excited to speak to me. Hi, welcome to Z Companion. Good afternoon. This is Mrs. Ali from Mayfield. Hi, Mrs. Ali. Welcome Hi. to the show. What's your question for Neil today? Uh, my question is that, that uh, I'm 40 years old and I have four kids. And um, uh, my, after my last kid, I have a problem of incontinence. Uh, whenever I sneeze or cough or, you know, sometimes if I, I'm on journey and I can't hold, 
that some drugs comes out. So yes. still any exercise for me to do to reduce this problem. Yeah, you, you, you've got to build up the muscles at the base of your abdomen, your pelvic floor muscles. Okay, right. so these are the ones that stop anything coming out of the body. So pelvic floor contractions are really good to do. It's difficult for me to help to show you on television, but I can tell you the kind of things that you need to do. Um, Aunty, right. if you just come out to the front a little bit here. So this is Ali, what Aarti and Neela are going to do now is demonstrate something, and I'm sure one of the and you may suffer from incontinence or have this problem or know someone who does, this exercise is certainly going to be useful to you or to them. So right. I'll you now. Okay, so the, yes. basic, the basic thing, I'm going to show you from one from this position very, very quickly, is the Aarti, you won't be able to see it clearly, but she's going to contract the gluteal muscles, the backside muscles. So she's tightening the glute muscles and relaxing, and then tightening it again, and then relaxing. Do you understand what I mean by that? Tightening the backside muscles and then relaxing repeatedly. Mm -hmm. If you do 30 times like that, it strengthens the hip, okay? It strengthens the area. And the other thing you can do, Aarti, if you go lying to the front again very quickly, is taking the right leg off the ground, up into the air, and t tensing that whole area down there, yeah, the muscles that you'd use to, to contain the body, mm -hmm. yeah, and then lowering the leg down, and same with the opposite side, lifting, tightening the glute muscles and lower body muscles, and then coming down again. How often should one do this? I think if you can do it on an empty stomach for five minutes, mm -hmm. but very quickly rotating, we'll start to strengthen that pelvic floor area, mm -hmm. and then abdominal exercises you can do. There's also something um, called kapalabhati, which is a pranayama exercise to strengthen that lower area as well. But again, because it's such a, a private area, it's hard to do demonstrations of it for you, unfortunately. And how long should one do this for? So you said do it for five minutes, yeah. every day, every yeah. other day, every, every week? Every day. I mean, with yoga practice, you can safely do it every day. Mm -hmm. And the idea is to work within your comfort region. So if you ever find a yoga exercise is finding, feeling uncomfortable or painful, then you know you've done too much of it. Okay. So I hope that helps you. All right. Thank you very much for the thank presentation you. once again. Now, I just want to remind you all, how I do lines that they are open. My bus is going and our operators are here and ready to answer your call. So let's move on to our next caller now, He's very interested in yoga. Hi there, welcome to Z Companion. So, Jeet, I believe you're on the line? Uh, yes, I'm on the line, yeah. Hi, Jeet, what would you like to ask our guest today? I just want to ask the, the yoga teacher. Last of the, the last three years, I've been suffering from my back problem, and uh, the, the pain starts coming from the back to my buttocks and to the calf. And the first the doctor told me that you got a sciatica now. Yeah. And they treated me as a sciatica now. Right. So because last year they took a scan. After the scan, they said it's not a sciatica. It's a muscle has gone deep, the back muscle. And as soon as I get up, I stand or do anything, the pain starts shooting coming from a back to the button, to the calf. I cannot even walk for two, two minutes, you know. As long as I'm sitting and lying on there's no pain. As soon as I get up, yeah. I start walking. The pain starts coming from the back to the buttocks to the calf. Okay. So this for the same for the same for our brain. Is there any yoga exercise that can do in this thing? Yeah, there is one that's come to mind because it sounds to me like it may be, I know it's not sciatica, the doctor said it's not sciatica, right? But I'm, I'm thinking that there's some opening of the back that you can do that will help you. So I'm going to show you a very simple version of pigeon pose, um, which I'm going to get Arctic to demonstrate for you now. So if you watch carefully, if you bring your right knee to the front like this, and for you, you might find it a little bit difficult. So I'm going to get you to do a very gentle version, which is keeping the hands a little bit further forward. So what this is doing is starting to open up the back area and stretch it and also release any possibility of any trapped nerves, mm -hmm. okay? So I want you to do this on both sides of the body, right knee forward, left leg back, and then left leg forward and right knee back, and let this do a little bit of body opening for, the, for you. Now, those of you at home that are Find it, would find this easy. There's another version that you can do that I'll show you just if, if you don't mind yeah. as well. So a uh, slightly more advanced version is for Arti to put her hands onto the leg. And this is more of an upright pigeon pose. So she can put both of her hands on the leg here and bring the chest forward. This really strengthens the back as well. It also opens up the hip area. Mm -hmm. And if she's able to, she can also open the arms up wide to the sides, carefully, not even, not even needing to push too much. And this is called pigeon two, and it opens up the chest, helps the lungs, helps the lymphatic system, helps circulation. 
So maybe you can work your way up to this type of position after a while, but just remembering, thank you, Arati, to just start very carefully in a very gentle way, those of you at home, and just doing something like this every day, just a little stretch in the front, or coming up only a tiny bit, and then working way up to the arms coming to the side. So Jesus, does that sound like something you're going to be able to do? Okay, don't worry about that. Uh, thank you very much for your call to do that. I do apologize. We just get disconnected with you earlier. Okay. I totally forgot. My apologies. Okay. No Let's move on to our next caller now, whose name is Anita. Anita, welcome to Z Companion. Okay, don't worry. Hi, Anita. Anita, I'm going to have to ask you, please turn your TV volume down. Anita, are you there? Yes, hello, I am here. Hi there. What's your question for Neil today? Yes, my, my breath might be so hurting. Mm -hmm. I don't know what reason is for it. Can you, can you explain to me why, why my feet are hurting when I put shoes on and walk? Okay, you have to yeah, do it. Yeah. Sure. I mean, feet are the thing that we use in the body more than any other, you know, probably even more than our hands as we're using our feet. So we've got a whole element of chikri yoga called toga, which is yoga for the toes, believe it or not. So if we can get some focus on Arti's feet, Mm -hmm. That would be fantastic. Okay. So I'd invite you to stand so, up. Anita, yeah. this exercise and what Neil's going to demonstrate for you now is something that will hopefully give you a piece of release. Over there, I'm going to show you the camera. I'm going to show you the camera. Then I'm going to show you the demonstration. I should say, how you can improve and hopefully get rid of that pain that you may be experiencing. So Neil and Arti. So the first thing Arti is going to do is what we call hot steppers. It's just a movement where she's coming up and down on the seat. Okay. So this is what I want you to do at home first of all, is get used to this movement of taking each heel up alternately and as you can see she's bringing one up whilst one is coming down so she's strengthening the calf muscles and she's stretching right into the toes here right into the balls of the toes where we sometimes get arthritis and problems okay. and she's starting to warm up the legs here mm -hmm. the other thing that i'll get her to do if you stay still for a moment auntie down there is just work on each individual toe so if you raise the big toe on one foot I'm not sure I'll give you one of this here. Yeah, there you go. Okay. So raising the, the big toe on one foot down like that, and then raising all of the toes. And on the other side, raising all the toes there. This seems really Good. easy. Yeah? It's something that you could probably do whilst watching the show. Yeah. I mean, this is the thing. And she's taking the feet inside and outside like this. Mm -hmm. Trying to take them inside a little bit. Yeah, and outside. So yeah, it's very, very simple to do. But what this is doing, keep going, is she's working the ankle joint in a way that it's not used to. And that's it, if we don't have that lifestyle we get enough foot exercises, you get pain in the feet. Okay. So a variety of foot exercises, the best way to go there to help your feet. Thank you. Wonderful. Well, thank you very much for that, Neil and Arti. I hope that answered your question. Hopefully you'll get some relief. As I found it does, that's certainly something that you can do at home to alleviate your pain. Let's move on to our next caller, who is very much interested in our topic of the day. Asante, welcome to the Companion. Hello. Hi. Hi, welcome to the show. Hello. What would you like to ask Neil? Yeah, because at my um, stomach muscles and my thigh muscles have gone weak. So uh, I would like uh, you to recommend an exercise for me, please. Okay, well, what, how do you know that your stomach muscles have gone weak? Well, who told you because, that? Um, I'm finding it hard to go up the stairs and I get very breathless and if there is something high, exercises and upper thigh exercises this will help you to stand up from the chair okay and, and to feel some strength so the first thing we'll do is some lower abdomen and then we'll do some thigh exercise and you should be fine with this all right Vasanti, i hope you got that and i hope you're going to be watching the uh, next few minutes after yeah hopefully you'll get a lot more relief from carrying out these exercises if you can okay thank you very much for your call so so, so what will happen is you're going to get yourself to a lying down position with the elbows tucked in behind you so you can see arty's elbows tucked in there mm -hmm. and then carefully one knee at a time take your knees to your chest one knee at a time and the other one as well okay and then a little bit start to take the legs out one at a time to about halfway and then back Okay, and then the other side halfway and back. And as you continue to do this, what's happening is you're starting to strengthen the muscles in your lower abdomen. So daily, do for one or two minutes on an empty stomach, taking your legs out one at a time like this. This is the only exercise I'm going to give you for stomach, but you start to strengthen this one. Okay, so to crack on a little bit, 
two minutes like this. And the second thing is some fly exercises. So if I can get Artie to a standing position, and this is the second thing you're going to do. And this is called Uttakasana. So Arti will go onto her toes for a few moments, and then she's going to bend her knees a little bit. That's it, and bring her arms out to the front. Don't, don't worry about the arms though, just focus on the legs, and that's enough. So she's going to hold a position here where she's starting to strengthen these legs. Mm -hmm. Okay? If you find holding for more than a few seconds is too much, then you can go straight again and put the heels down and flat and rest. And then again, do the same thing onto the toes, bend the knees a little bit, don't go too far down, a little bit more, and you're starting to strengthen the muscles that you used to stand. You know, these are the muscles you use. So let's say we do 10 times like this every day and then see if your legs start to get stronger. I'm sure that they will. Again, come up and heels down. So 10 times repeated like that, plus the ab, ab exercises, you should be fine. Okay? Fantastic. Thank you Thank very you. much. Thank you. Let's move on to our next caller. His name is Nina. Nina, welcome to Be Companion. Yeah, I'm um, Okay. Excellent, very good question. Now, uh, Anina would like to know for the knees, what's mm -hmm. the best form of exercise? Yeah, I think the first thing to do is to make sure the knee is not drying out, so you want to get movement in the knees. Mm -hmm. So if I can please get Arthi to stand up again. So Nina, I'll be your knee or Arthi, after this policy demonstration being it. It's hopefully going to help you and perhaps any viewers about them watching the show with any form of knee pain, and hopefully help you with the things that you may be experiencing. So Neil, Arthi, I'm, over, I'm passing over to you now. Thank you, Natasha. So if we bring the knee up to waist height, and then I'm going to get her to close the knee back and then open it up straight again. Okay, all the way, all the way to the top. That's it, and then back again. So the first thing you do before you start any exercises, continue, is to do 10 like this on each side. So you, as you're doing it, you might feel a little, or hear a little crack inside the knee, and that's the air and the dryness that's trapped. So the first thing is to bring some movement to your knee. So we do 10 times like this on one side and 10 times to the other. The other thing that you have to remember, okay, I think, is to work on strengthening the muscles that support the knee. And we've got to remember is the knee doesn't have any muscles. It has cartilages and bones. So the muscles that you need to make a strong knee are actually the calf muscles, is actually the hamstrings and the lower quadriceps. So as I just showed the last caller, you've got to strengthen the lower quadriceps by doing Uttakatasana, but only a very light version. So right, you come onto your toes again, bend the knees just a little bit, and that's enough. So for knees, bending the knees this much and just allowing some, some strengthening of these lower quadriceps, first thing to do, do maybe five or 10 of those. The second thing to do, if you've got straight legs, is just coming up and down with both the heels at the same time, up and down. So what this is doing is it's starting to strengthen the calf muscles, which will strengthen the back of the knees. And the third very simple thing I'll get you to do is strengthening the hamstrings. So again, if Arthi comes down to the floor again for the final time, and she's going to go into a very simple locust pose. We've used this three times so you can see how powerful this position is. And as we raise that right leg off the ground, we notice that the muscles that are lifting this leg are actually at the back of the knee. If you could feel someone's knee while they're doing that, you'll see that these muscles are tight now. Okay. And these are the muscles that will strengthen the knee. So those three exercises, repeat them daily, and the knee area will get stronger. Okay, Nina, thank you very much for your call. I hope that answered your question. Let's move on to our next caller now, who is very much keen on yoga. Melinda, welcome to Vegan Pan. Hello. 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 Hi, I'm just going to put your tag in my guest search. Yeah. I mean, 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 I Okay. You got that one, Neil? Yeah, I understand. <laughs> Don't worry about your right shoulder. It's fine. You need your shoulders with me. Okay. So she's shoulder exercise. So again, the thing you need, we're talking about joints earlier, is mm -hmm. good movement in your shoulders. So if I can turn to one direction, and I'm going to show you some exercises that you can do in your shoulder if you focus on me now. So we need, we need to make 360 degree movements with the shoulder. So you're taking the shoulder forward, and then rolling the shoulder up towards the ears, and then rolling the shoulder back, and then rolling the shoulder down. So you've got to do full 360 degree movements of the shoulder to start giving it some, some energy. And then the opposite way, similarly, good round movements of the shoulder. 
The other thing that I want you to do, that's your first exercise, your second exercise is going to be this. Again, with the shoulder, is taking the right hand to your right shoulder. And if you can just allow some movement like this with your elbow. So your elbow is leading the circle. I'll show you from the side again if you need to see. The elbow is leading the circle and in both directions, same type of thing. That's really good for the shoulder. And finally, just to help it, is some shoulder shrugging. This helps to take some tension out of the shoulder as well. So try those things and your shoulder should get some good circulation and start to feel a bit better. And how many rotations should one do? I would try to work on about four in each direction, if you can. Four to the left, four to the right, mm -hmm. um, four clockwise, four anti-clockwise. Is there any time of day which one should do it? Not really, not with the shoulders, unless you digest food through your shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The main, yeah, the main restriction with yoga in times of day is, is if you've got food in your stomach, but with things like the shoulder, anytime. Okay, wonderful. Let's move on to our next caller now, who's online. Hi there, welcome to The Companion. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hello. I believe you have a question for Neil today. Yes. Katira, are you online? Yes, my question is that... Um, Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear perfectly. What's your question okay, for you so, today? Um, yeah, my question is that whenever I travel, my uh, feet get very badly swollen and it lasts for days. So how to get rid of it? What's getting swollen, sorry? No, and my legs. legs, my legs. Oh, my legs, feet. sorry. I legs, okay, not the So your legs are getting swollen. When you're traveling, how are you traveling? What, what's your mode of transport? By the plane, like it's like five, six hours flight. Okay, yeah. okay, so look, this is a common it's, thing. It's swollen very bad and then it lasts for days, so. Yeah, it, it's, it's a very common thing actually because, you know, when we're in planes, we're sedentary. We're sitting in one position literally for five, six hours, as you say, right? I would suggest really, really importantly that you first of all drink a lot of water while you're on the plane. The second thing is get up every half an hour, 40 minutes, and take a walk up and down the plane. Go to, to the back cabin where the toilets are and do your leg stretching exercise like the ones we've done here. Because it sounds to me like you're predisposed a little bit to get this more than other people, the swelling. So be careful. Do exercise during the journey. Before you fly, for 24 hours, have a low sodium diet. Have less salt in your diet so your blood will be running quicker. Take more water before you fly. That's what will help you. Okay. And which exercises? So similarly to, to what we were doing with, with, with Arti, you know, the foot stepping exercises, where we're lifting the heels up and down, mm -hmm. that is really, really good to do on a plane. I do that myself on airplanes. I sit at stand at the back and I move my legs. That means there's circulation happening. So just raising the heels one at a time, that, that will serve, your, serve the purpose of increasing your circulation. And I suppose even walking up and down the aisles yeah. to an extent. Yeah, taking the knees to the chest. Just any kind of basic standing leg exercise will be fine for you. Okay, thank you very much for your call. I hope that answered your question. Thanks once again. Now, coming back to the question of yoga, we have a lot of a lot of experiences stresses on a daily basis. Mm. Posture is the one word which I think is the bane of my life. How do we get that posture, taking your posture, a challenge? Yeah, yeah. We lean over desks, yeah. a lot of people are studying for exams, yeah, yeah. for university, etc. So we yeah. tend to hunch over computers, yes. and desks. And desks. What can we do to improve our posture? I mean, one of the best poses, I, I think, in terms of yoga exercises, I'll, I'll do a couple with our team now, is we're going to do the the, work, the seated warrior pose. So she comes onto her toes like in Deepasana, yeah. and then she's going to put her hands onto her hips and push the chest forward. So if we can see Arti clearly from there, I need to see your spine okay. clearly. Maybe come forward a tiny bit. Mm -hmm. So she's onto her toes, keep the knees together as normal, just put the knees together. And all she's going to do is put her hands onto her hips and Tasha here, and just push her chest forward and take her shoulders back. Okay, so I'm going to show a bit of here. This pose that we're demonstrating right now is to improve good posture. If you suffer from this problem, I know I do, everyone moves my posture is horrific. Mm -hmm. This is something that will certainly be useful. So you have to just stay put in this position for a few minutes, I take it, or a few seconds? Yeah, if, she, if you stay in there for about a minute, and as you can see, she's pushing her chest and rib cage forward, mm -hmm. which is the opposite to what we do when we're slouching. Okay. You know? So she's doing the opposite. She's pushing everything out. She's taking her shoulders back, Normally when we're slouching, we're dropping everything in. Mm -hmm. So she's making the opposite movement to what we normally do. And of course, if she holds that there for longer, then the muscles get used to that. And then when you come out of that shape, your, your body is more open. Mm -hmm. The other thing to do, I can remember, is we're taking the hands in prayer position around the back. Mm -hmm. So I mean, this is a general way. I mean, I'm not sure how much you can see, but turn the body around. 
well, you don't even have to be balancing when you do this, but if she gets the body in so that the hands are in prayer at the back mm -hmm. and she takes the shoulders back, this, this pushes the body forward. So you can see it's impossible to slouch while her hands are there. Okay. So even if she's standing up or you guys are at home and you're standing up and you practice prayer position to the rear, it's impossible for you to be in a slouch shape. So once you do this and you feel the body in this shape, if you keep the shape but remove the hands, remove the hands but keep the shape, it tells you now it's reshaped you. Okay, wonderful. That's fantastic. Well, I'll certainly be trying that tonight. Now, guys, we only have three minutes to go. Sky and both come out of my bus. I want to squeeze in one more caller before we have to love you and leave you for the day. So let's move on to Neela, who's online. Neela, welcome to Z Companion. But I just want to read a question to Neil, okay? Neil, so hold on for a second. Neil says that she experiences a lot of upper back pain, particularly when she's carrying her housework. She sits down, may get a peace of mind for a short period of time, but it's constant pain. So yeah, I feel like cat pose will be really good for her from, okay. from a simple position. Neil, thank you very much for your call. I'll be your movement, oh, your routine, I'll be Neil or Arthur's is kind of it's going to hopefully benefit you and your back pain. So please do try it. Make it a little dago, then please do try it and stop. Don't exert yourself too much. Yeah, it's a very simple thing to do. If you just get yourself onto all fours, it's, it's, it's very simple. You've probably seen this yoga exercise, but it's useful for so many things. Is the cat pose. Just position your hands under your shoulders, your knees directly under your hips, and you start to do the arch cat, which will stretch out your upper back. So the chin will come tucked in, the hips will rotate in, rotate in nicely, mm -hmm. and she's spreading the shoulders nice and wide. So this will take the tension out of the muscles that you're feeling in your upper back. You stay there for a few seconds, letting your breathing be natural. Mm -hmm. Breathe into a flat cat position. And then as you exhale, taking the head up and just stretching out again, but in the opposite direction. So this should remove tension and also just unlock any tightness that's been building up in your back. Wonderful. Try that. And should me do this before doing the household chores or after? I forget the household chores. Just get on with the cat first and do it. <laughs> No, no, do, do it after and do it, do it before to warm up and after to warm down. How about that? Fantastic. Well, Neil, I want to thank you so much. Can I just and mention one more thing? We have got this great event going on for International Yoga Day on the 21st of June at Alexandra Palace. Mm -hmm. We've got almost 80 free yoga classes for people. We've got 40 different yoga organizations, including Chikri Yoga and Brahma Kumaris. So hopefully you guys can come down for that. Fantastic. Well, I want to thank you once again for coming on the show. It's a pleasure to have you as always. Arthi, thank you so much yeah. for your flexibility and endeavor. <laughs> you are highly useful to not only mess up with the views at home. After the session, I'd like to thank you for joining us on the phone and message that we have a lot of time to talk about our family yoga. The next day is Yoga Week here on Z Companions and tomorrow will be another day focusing on yoga. If you have any questions, do get in touch with us. We will be here with you in front of you. This is Z Companions. Don't forget to see you with us. We will see you with us. See you with us.